Last week, this website won award site of the day. So naturally, I had to dig around and see what gems I could uncover for a rebuild. That's when I spotted this hover effect. It seemed pretty easy at first, but the deeper I got into it, the more there was to it. But after a couple of hours, I cracked it. I replicated the effect perfectly using JavaScript and GSAP. Today I'm going to show you how to build this hover animation using just the basics of JavaScript and GSAP. If you find these videos helpful, please drop a like on the video and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Alright, no more waiting, let's dive into the code. First up, we'll set up our main container. This container is split into two key sections, one for showcasing preview images and the other for the menu. In the preview section, I'm going to include two divs. We'll use them to display two images at a time whenever you hover over the menu items. Moving on to the menu, we'll structure each entry as a menu item block. Inside each of these, we are going to break the text down into three columns, info, name and tag. Each part will contain some text wrapped in a paragraph tag. Finally, we are going to replicate this menu item four more times. So I'll simply duplicate this initial setup and replace the text. And that wraps up our HTML setup. Let's get to styling. As usual, let's start by removing margins and paddings from all the elements and setting their box sizing to border box. The images should take 100% width and height of their parent. I'll also set object fit to cover just to make sure they maintain their aspect ratio. The container will also have 100% of the body's width and height covering the full viewport. Now here comes the key element, the menu. It will also have 100% of the width. I will add some margin at the top and bottom in order to push it near the center of the page. Next, the menu item. It will have 100% of width and have some padding on the sides. I will set display to flex here as we want the text to be displayed in a row layout. Make sure you also set cursor to pointer to denote hover behavior. After that, I'll define some generic styles to the paragraph elements, basically all the text. I am setting position to absolute as we want to animate their position later on y-axis using GSAP. I will also add some common font styling like font family, font weight, text transform, line height and later spacing. Let's also define the transition duration for the color so the color animates smoothly on hover. Now the child elements, the info, tag and name. They should have relative position just so the absolute position works correctly on its child paragraph elements. I'll also set overflow to hidden so that we can move the text elements right through it. I'll later set flex values on the first and last columns and set a fixed height for those same as the font size. I'll do the same with the middle column as well, but it will have a higher flex value, make the fonts bigger and hence its height as well. Now here comes the crucial part. We'll be creating duplicate text elements later using JavaScript, same as the currently present text elements inside each menu item. This is because we want the current text to slide out of the row on hover and show the another same text coming from bottom. Now, since we don't want to add duplicate paragraph elements inside our HTML, we will create and append those elements later with JavaScript. But here, we will define styles for those text elements. For now, we'll push them 100% from top and set its text color. We'll later manipulate this value to 0% whenever user moves mouse over any menu item. We also want to change the color of all the current text when the user hovers over the menu. So I'll define the color value for that too. Finally, let's grab the preview container and set its position to absolute. This is because we will be updating its position in real time based on the cursor's position using JavaScript. For now, I will set its top and left values to zero, give it a fixed width and height and set a higher z index value.
Make sure you also set pointer events to none so it doesn't affect the cursor behavior of any underlying element. Both the preview image containers should also have the absolute position because we will be placing them on top of each other. The second preview image container will have an offset of 20 pixels from the top and left. At the end, make sure you also set preview image position to absolute as we'll be appending a new image on every new item hover and they need to be stacked on top of each other. That's pretty much it. Let's get to the main part, JavaScript. Let's start by initializing our script once the DOM is fully loaded. We first set up an array containing the paths to our images. These images will be used for the hover reviews on each menu item. Next, we'll select all the elements with the class menu item and iterate over them. For each menu item, we find elements tagged as info, name and tag. Inside these elements, we locate the paragraph element, clone it and append this duplicate right after the original. This setup will allow us to create a sliding text animation later. Now onto the image previews. We define a function called append images that inserts two images into predefined containers in our HTML. These images are initially hidden using clip path. and are animated to slide into view using gsap when a menu item is hovered over. The clip path property is key here as it creates the illusion that the image is gradually being revealed. To manage performance and prevent clutter, we also create a function called remove extra images. This function ensures that if the number of images in a preview container exceeds a threshold, the oldest images are removed. In this case, we are keeping a threshold of 10, so all the previous images apart from the last 10 will be removed. Each menu item is equipped with the event listeners for mouse over and mouse out. On mouse over, we activate the mouse over animation function, which animates the original paragraph moves up and the duplicate slides up from below, creating a seamless transition. In addition, the append images function is called to display the relevant image. On mouse out, the mouse out animation function reverse the text animation, resetting the text positions. Additionally, when the mouse leaves the entire menu area, all images in the preview containers transition out, effectively disappearing from the frame. Lastly, to make our previews follow the cursor movement, we attach a mouse move listener to the document. This listener updates the position of the preview container in real time ensuring it moves smoothly across the screen just behind the cursor. Thanks to the quick response of GSAP's animation properties. 
and that concludes our setup hope you found the video helpful see you in the next one